All right, welcome back, everybody. There is a look at Dodger Stadium, and that's where the World Series is heading next. Game three, Friday, 7.30 Eastern time. James Coe, Dan Helley, and former Dodgers general manager Ned Coletti is with us now. Um, so many takeaways, I guess, from these first two games. Not many of them have been positive Dodger takeaways, but you feel like just coming back here in the cozy confines of Dodger Stadium, especially with the weather, going to be 40 degrees warmer going to be a big deal for these guys i think it's whenever you're at home <clears throat> this time of year it's a big it is a big deal and i think i think the weather has played a little bit of a role in it uh you know clayton kershaw has developed a <clears throat> great curveball but tough to use it when the weather's the way the weather the weather's been uh Madsen, really to change up is what they put back into his his arsenal right tough to use that so i think getting home it's always better to be at home that's why you play all year to get home field advantages so you've got a chance to win more at home. Do you go right back to Madsen in, in game three if you need to, or do you just do you let him have a little break? No, I, I don't think you have a time for a break right now. I think I think you go by whatever the game is telling you you hmm. need to do. And sometimes you need to stop the game in the middle of the game. Sometimes you need to stop a rally in the fifth inning. Sure. Sometimes that's where it goes. You'll see a closer once in a while pitch the eighth sometimes because that's where the, the lineup is coming up. That's where – you got a chance to win the game or stop a rally. I think that rally last night came out of nowhere, really. You got Vasquez hitting 200 during the regular season. You got two outs in the fifth. And suddenly now you've got a whole different dynamic going on. Completely different. Yep. Ned Coletti joining us here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, Ned, talk to us about, you know, the decision to – not necessarily start Cody Bellinger. You see Jock Peterson not starting it. I mean, that's a lot of power on that bench. I mean, when you only get one at bat for these guys, it's just, I, I think a lot of traditional baseball heads are, are, are scratching their heads thinking, why would you do this? Yeah, I, I understand. You know, you got, you had four left-handed hitters on that, on that bench last night that had about 110 home runs. You know what I mean? Combined. I mean, that, that's a lot of power, the especially top four home in, run a, hitters in a on the ballpark. Bench. Yeah. And, you know, but they play matchup baseball all the time. I mean, it's a different way of looking at it. And, you know, two, I think where it gets a little bit tougher is when you try to put somebody in the middle or the later part of a game. Right. You look at, you look at their Come bullpen. Cold. Boston's bullpen. Kelly, 100 miles an hour. Ivaldi, 100 miles an hour. Kimbrell, tremendous slider, 98 miles an hour. That's a lot of guys to catch up with when you've been sitting in the cold for a few hours waiting to get an opportunity. You can swing in the cage all night long, and you can try to keep warm by a heater, but that's not like playing the game. So I think it is a little bit tougher to do. Is it is it a situation where, it, I know it sounds a little ridiculous, because first of all, a lot of us are just watching this on TV, so you don't feel that cold. But what you're talking about is going beyond the numbers and kind of reading that situation a little bit, playing it a little bit more artistically uh, in that way. So I, I Again, I kind of look at that situation as well, and I say to myself, you're right. You know Joe Kelly's coming out of the pen. You know he's going to be throwing that gas face. I mean, you don't necessarily know if Ivaldi's going to come out, but he's a weapon certainly out of the bullpen. Yep. you got to take into consideration some of the external factors beyond just what's on that stat sheet, don't you? Always. You always have to do it, especially this time of year. Everything is magnified. All the scouting is all turned up a notch. All your senses are turned up a notch at this time of a season. And so you've got to take a lot of different things into consideration. But it's easier to sit here on the couch and talk <laughs> about it than it is to sit in the third base or the first True. base dugout of Fenway right. and, and have it you know, come as fast as it does. People think baseball is a slow game. It is so fast in, in the thought process of it. But you know, adjusting is part of the thing. But the way the Red Sox have gone about this has been really phenomenal, almost historical when you think about mm -hmm. what they've been able to do with runners in scoring position and two outs. And two Who outs. does that? You know, I read uh, Jason Stark today, and uh, he talked about Ted Williams in 41 had that tremendous season at 406 and his numbers. The Red Sox, with runners in scoring position as a team this postseason, have done better than Ted Williams did in wow. that season as one of the greatest hitters, one of the greatest seasons for a hitter of all time. That's insane. You know, how you keep that going, you know, it's, it's up to them to do it, but that's... That's been phenomenal. That's Special. been a game changer. And I think what you're talking about is is one through eight in the lineup. Three thirty three is what they're batting with uh, with runners, runners in scoring wow. position. Listen, it's an analytics driven game. It's different yes. than what James Coe and I cover for yep. a living, which is the NFL, and they are <clears throat> incorporating more analytics into football. But can you use too many analytics when you leave your top four home run hitters in the NLCS? MVP and Bellinger on the bench for two games in a row to start a game. 
Are you, are you overanalyzing? Sometimes don't you just want to get your best players out on the field and let your players make plays? You know what? It's it's such a, a deep question. It's sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. If they happen to hold on to a two to one lead last night, our whole conversation's in, in a <laughs> different a good way. Point. You know, and they right. would have still started with the same lineup. So it, it's a, it's a tough thing to answer only because there's so many different factors that are involved in the decision making. And they have so much information. You know, we all have some information. Yeah. They have so much information that leads them to the decisions that that they that they make. They've won six straight Western titles. They've been to the LCS three times, the World Series the last two. They do have something figured out that True. a lot of teams don't have it's figured true. out. And uh, sometimes, you know what? Sometimes players also have to produce. That's true. Who who is a guy that you look at on this roster who? not only needs to perform, but could be the one to perform once they get here to L.A.? Would it, would it be a guy like Puig that you know very well? You know, Yasiel Puig, I think, has got a chance to, to like, like the place up. We know how he plays. He plays with great exuberance, mm -hmm. with great excitement, with great passion. Um, I think he's got a shot. I think a guy like Bellinger. You get Bellinger hot. You get even Jock, one of those two guys. You get them hot at this point in time. It'll change the series. The World Series is such a well, any any seven game series to decide a championship at the highest level is so intriguing and interesting on a game by game basis. If this is one to one, totally different deal. If it goes two to one, it's a totally different situation. The odd number games are usually just have a little bit more twist to them mm -hmm. than the even number games. So you got an odd number game coming up here. It's either going to be three zero or it's going to be two to one, where a little bit of pressure starts to find its way back to Boston because then they're going to have to probably win another game. At, at this place. Dodgers, though, they're, they're in a hole because they're going to have to win a game at Fenway Park if they're going to win the World Series, at least one and maybe two. How important is playing with the lead? They, they, had, they had the lead for a moment uh, last night, but when the Red Sox score first, they're practically unbeatable. Yeah, it's, it's very important to have the lead. It's even more important to keep the lead <laughs> because, you know, it's one thing to have because you grab momentum. And let's face it, that is a great momentum type of ballpark, Fenway right. Park. People are right on top of you. You got great fan base there. You get a lead like they did last night, that's great. Because you can, as as noisy as it can be, it can get just as quiet. Can you talk but about you that? you got to stop it. You, you, you can't give it back. Can you talk about that atmosphere? Um, you know, not necessarily maybe in Fenway, but when you got a historic ballpark, you know, something like Wrigley, you know yep. what I mean? Do you feel those ghosts? You know what? I think you feel the, uh, the history of a place. Yeah. And I think you know, especially Fenway, there's no ballpark in America built like Fenway Park. Right. You know, it's got all the nooks and crannies. It's got the, it's got the Green Monster. It's got the pesky pole. It's got right center <laughs> field. That's forever out there. Different wall sizes. A lot of different dynamics going on. And part of the beauty of baseball, I think, and yeah. you do have interleague play, but you don't, the Dodgers haven't been in Fenway Park for a while. A lot of those players were there for the first time. Mm -hmm. And they're going to the Green Monster and they're, they're checking it out. And it's really a cool experience. Sure. But it's not a it's not a tour. It's not a travel <laughs> trip. It's like the biggest <laughs> business trip of your life, you know? And so it, it is, you got to get used to it. You got to get accustomed to it. You don't have a chance to see it during the season, which I think is, is cool for baseball, that they do still divide the two leagues and they divide it up where you're seeing Mookie Betts for really the first time, unless you watch him on TV or drove down to Anaheim to watch him play the Angels, you're really kind of seeing him. True. If you're a National League fan for the first time, Dodger fan, you learn about Mookie Betts. J.D. Martinez just saw in Arizona last year for a minute. But it's it's an interesting interesting dynamic that they create by doing what they do. But historic ballparks? They're, they're pretty cool. A, a lot of buzz uh, last night after the game about Mookie Betts possibly playing second base uh, when they get here. I, if you're the Red Sox, would that be a move that, that you made? Undoubtedly. I think he's a tremendous athlete. That's where he came up. Mm. He played a little bit uh, until 2014. I think he was a second baseman, so he's familiar with it. I'm sure, you know, they just didn't get on the flight last night and say, hey, Mookie, you think about playing second base when we get there Friday? <laughs> no, I'm sure that they've been thinking about it, working with him. He's got Pedroia there that is, is obviously very much involved, yeah. can help him get some of the rough spots over. To me, the double play will be his toughest challenge, especially with his back to the runner. I think that will be a challenge. The rules kind of support a player a little bit more than they did as far as getting blindsided or getting getting run down in that right. situation. But I think that's the move they, they're going to make. They have to keep him in the lineup. They got to keep JD Martinez in the lineup. They got to, in my opinion, the outfield's got to be the outfield. That's got to be the same 
same you got the same group of guys, but you've got to have J.D. Martinez playing instead of the What a great problem to have, by the way. Oh my God, we have too many hitters. We don't know where oh. to plug them all in. Well, to your point, Brock, Brockman asked this earlier. Who do, you, who do you start a team around, Mookie or J.D. Martinez? You can only have I one. I probably thought I started about Mookie, and that's no, that's no slam on J.D. Martinez. J.D. Martinez is a tremendous player. Yeah. Mookie, better defensively. Mm -hmm. Mookie, younger. Uh, I don't think Mookie will do what J.D. Martinez has done power-wise, run production-wise. But, you know, you, I like the youth a little bit. I like the, the, the WNL yeah, we'll play defense. Defense is a huge part of the game. Game, game three, 7.30 Eastern uh, on Friday. Rick Porcello against the 24-year-old rookie, Walker Bueller. And Bueller's the ace of the future yep, of the staff. No this, kid is an, this kid is an absolute stud. Like David Price also yeah. went to Vanderbilt. When his fastball is going... He, he's hard to beat. How do you look at this matchup? I think it's going to be a great matchup. You've got a veteran Cy Young Award winner in Porcello. You've also got a young pitcher, and I agree with you. This, this kid has got what I would call October stuff. Some pitchers that, are, that don't throw quite as hard and don't have quite as much sharpness to their pitches, they can win 15, 17 games mm -hmm. from, from April to the end of September. They get to the postseason, it's a different story. People tee them up a little bit. This kid is so good. He's got a high fastball, a low fastball with some great life to it, great slider, breaking ball. He knows how to pitch, too. And he's also got a little bit more of a characteristic to him that I love at this time of year. That's what I'm tapping he's got into. Some grit. Yeah. He's got some yeah. grit, too. He's, not a, he's a great kid, but he's not a pleasant performer. I mean, <laughs> he's, got, he's got a little grit to him, and, and you've got to have grit this time of year. Dan Haley, James Coe here on the Rich Eisen Show. Ned Coletti joining us. Ned, I... Am I crazy to, to see a little bit of uh, of Madison Bumgarner in Walker Bueller, man? He, you talk yeah. about that nastiness, you know what I mean? You talk about that heat that he can throw. I see a little bit of Mad Bum in there. No doubt. And I think that that, that to me is what separates. I've been doing you know, in the game for decades. And I, as, I, as I separate the good from the great and the great from the iconic, it's really a lot of different things, including having that grit to mm -hmm. you. And having that, not just grit on its own, that, that's got some value but that you are able to take the great ability you have and, and accentuate it, accent it by how you prepare and how you, how you play. He's, he's done a lot of things this year. This kid has had a year where they didn't even know if he was going to be in the rotation until later. They were going to pitch him out of the pen. He's done a lot of pitching this year, but he's been, he's been up to the task, too. He just, just had that big start in Milwaukee not too long ago, and that, those are big moments. Been in the College World Series, and and that's a cool thing for a college kid. But that ain't that ain't the World Series. That ain't Major League Baseball. <laughs> but you know, he's he's certainly capable of really turning the series around. The the numbers say it doesn't bode well for the Dodgers. Uh, teams that have gone up two nothing in the World Series have an eighty four percent chance to win. That being said, the numbers didn't bode well for the Dodgers in May, that's where right. they were below five hundred, or in Ten several games. games in the postseason where they were behind and came back to win. Do you feel like those experiences will indeed help them once they get back to Dodger Stadium here? I think every, every season is different, and every team has got its, its own fingerprint and, and its own style of play. They were 16-26. and 26. I think that was the worst record in the history of the L.A. part of the franchise. Hmm. You know, that's, that's pretty tough to overcome. They were in third place. They played in a tough division. You had Colorado. You had Arizona, two teams that battled all year long. They had to play 163rd game to win a six-straight division. They are kind of in tune with let's do it the difficult way. And all those numbers, yeah, <laughs> anybody can say, way. you know, it's easy. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. You know, you're up two to nothing. You got a chance. You got a better chance to win it than the team down 0-2. But still, you know, that's, that's how history is made, too. That is how history is made. That is how things are changed. It's true. Look at, they celebrated Dave Roberts stealing a base the other day in game four of the LCS a long time ago, right? He stole a base. Billy Miller, one of my dear friends, singles him in against Mariano Rivera. History starts to be made. Who thought that they were going to come back from three down I know. with, with two outs in the ninth inning? A stolen base. Dave Roberts could live to be 200 years old. He will be known forever <laughs> as the guy who stole a base that's and turned right. history around. So that stuff is all cool, being down 2-0, being up 2-0, whatever it is. But that's how history gets made, is when something like that happens that you don't necessarily expect or see all the time. If the Red Sox are able to hold on and win this World Series, the depth and the talent on that roster, we, we talk about dynasties so much yep. in sports. Could this be a dynasty in the making? Could this be a team that could string together two or three? They're so young, and, too. It's tough it's to incredible. do it. They do have a lot of young talent, but it, it, it is tough to win. People think it's easier to win. They haven't had to do it. 
it is tough to do. They have to figure out their bullpen at the end of this year. True. Uh, Kimbrell's uh, going to be a free agent. Uh is going to be a free agent. They've got a lot of things to, to think through. Um, anything is possible, but I think in this day and age, when you string together consistent years of sustained excellence, that's special. That's prob- That's far harder than coming back down two games. <laughs> that's far harder. Do you, do you think that the – Top four home run hitters, Bellinger, Muncy, Peterson, and Grandal will be on the bench when game three starts. I, no, I think you'll see at least three, <laughs> if not four of them, in the game. You have a right-handed pitcher going, too. And, you yeah. know, so they, they play it the way they play, and they've been ultra successful doing it. Ned Coletti, thanks so much for coming in. Hey, my pleasure. Great to be with you just guys. Learned, it's always good to talk baseball. Just learned that, that we're neighbors, live about uh, five blocks apart, and we're not sure. talking New York City blocks. These are these are tighter little blocks we'll here. We'll do so it from the backyard next th- time. That's right. <laughs> we'll, we'll, they will, we'll run into you just down there the road from here at the Rich Eisen Studios. Ned Coletti, uh, thank you very much. Spectrum Sportsnet analyst right now, perhaps uh, general manager again in the future. Uh, time will tell. But he's enjoying this TV thing. Pretty damn good at it, too. Thanks, Ned. We appreciate it. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.